This bedroom is where I do my work now. It's the room in our house left empty when Santiago moved back to Mexico in February. February seems like a lifetime ago now. It's quiet and confidential, but its walls are stark white, with just a tiny window that lets light in. It's a pretty bleak place to conduct my visits. There's no art, no photos, no signs of life anymore. I haven't added any in hopes that this is all temporary. The room is so empty, in fact, that my voice echoes when I call my clients. Hi, it's Katie, your nurse. Is this still a good time to talk? Over the past few months, I've kind of grown to resent this room. It's boring and dim, and I hate to say it, but my moods tend to match it when I'm in it. I don't think I'm an especially great nurse, but I do know that I thrive with connection. I hold space for my clients to feel and to talk and to be seen. And when I'm in the spare bedroom talking on the phone, it's not the same. One afternoon, I'm sitting on the bare mattress when Grace calls. She's three weeks postpartum, and she's crying from the bathroom of her mom's house because she has nowhere else to cry. It's moments like this that I hate the spare bedroom the most. It makes me wish, more than anything, I could be there to support my clients like Grace in person. We'd have great discussions and laugh and learn from each other. Yes, I can listen and send resources and make referrals, but it doesn't replace being able to hold this newborn baby, allowing this mama to take a deep breath. Grace's baby is two and a half months now. What does he look like? Does he smile at her or spit up or make a face when he poops? I hate that I don't know. And while I know that there are bigger things at play here, the spare bedroom gets the brunt of it all. 